Welcome to another edition of the Resilient Living Podcast, a show dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. All right, living and being the change you want to see in the world. This is not like this special message, this special information as far as resilient living, but in a kind of way, I think it is. We have to change things around, and I think it's it changes with the way we treat each other, the way we treat people, the way we treat nature, the earth, mother earth, ourselves. We need to change this all up and start being a little bit more kind and having a little bit more patience and understanding in my opinion. And I think living the and being the change you wanna see in the world, it needs to start with yourself. And I think it's a very difficult one for people to, to grasp, to, to understand, to do things that nobody else maybe will ever see. I spoke a lot on this show about planting trees that maybe for the, the harvest of the wood you will never see, but those generations after you, whether it be your children or anybody else, will be able to inherit those things and they'll be able to utilize those things. And what if many, what if just a quarter of our forefathers, you know, or the people, the, the women and men that came before us, what if they all started doing that? What if they all started planting fruit trees, avocado trees and stuff like that, nut trees and stuff everywhere where, where the bus stop is, you know, there's a, an apricot tree. I don't know. There's just stuff everywhere. And these are the kind, this is the world that we would live in. We would make the world a better place. But a lot of people I think have the attitude of, you know, live for today, for tomorrow we die. But I think that what the message I want to say in order to live a happy, resilient life. See, we can live resilient, I think. We can live sustainable, but are we truly happy? And one of the things, I want to share a story with you guys is I was driving down the road with my children here on the uh, first of the year. And we were driving out to family's house to visit with them and they got to see their cousins. And I was rush, rush, rush that morning. I got everybody up early, I made breakfast and stuff and we just started heading out. And as we were driving about 30 minutes in, I just giggled to myself because I was hurrying up, I got everything all set, I took a part of my day out to get everything planned for this and it was so that my children could gain, even if they gained 10 minutes extra to hang out with their cousins who they love so dear. It's worth it to me. And I love my my nieces and nephews and my daughters equally to where I just had this wonderful feeling inside. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to bottle this one up. I'm going to tell them. And I told my oldest daughter, I've just, I'm sorry, you know, I was in a hurry this morning, but I want to get you to hang out with your cousins because I love you and I love them and I want to put you guys together. And it just brings me joy. And she just says, I love you, dad. And I says, I love you too. And it's those things right there. Um, Picking up trash in the ocean, on the beach. Uh, I have a uh, uh, some videos I made of me just by myself, just kind of talking. I got a little bored. Uh, I have these little, the gophers, these little uh, grabbers, so I don't have to bend over. And I get me a little uh, uh, reusable grocery bag. And as I'm getting my exercise in the morning, uh, I may be talking into my phone, doing something like a TikTok or an Instagram video. I used to call it like a walkabout or something. I would just take people and put the phone up to my face as I'm walking and cleaning stuff up. And I didn't realize that, you know, I wanted to, to do like a, something different, a little show. And I started getting inspired by picking up the trash because it makes me happy. The place is cleaner and imagining if other people did this stuff. But it's that joy inside that you get that nobody else has. There's money cannot buy these things. Nobody could influence you. Nobody could put that in you. It's you when you decide to live this way and to do good things that the good feelings start to happen inside you. And once that happens and once you grasp that, that is, to me, is a missing link to true success. Now, you can have the money, you can have the fame, you can have even resiliency or sustainable practices, a big, giant permaculture operation, but it's what's going on inside. If you can get that giddiness, like the way I feel when I look at things that I've done and say, my, go- my goodness, have I-, I-, I have won the lottery of the self. And you, it's, it's just unstoppable, as they say. You just you feel so good. You have a smile on your face and nobody even knows why. You're truly, truly helping. You're feeling that tone in your belly. So one of the things, um, the stories that kind of prompted this today was um, I do this quite often, not forget my bags, right? Uh, I, when I go grocery shopping, I usually bring my reusable bags. And um, when I don't, I make a, a lesson for myself where I'll have the clerk put everything aside and go ahead and just take all the other people and I'll go all the way back to my car painfully, grab my bags, get back in the line so that I learn this lesson. Because what happens is I kept forgetting and forgetting and forgetting. 
Finally, you know, I'd say, oh, well, just go ahead and give me the plastic bags. You know, finally I says, no, I've got to get some discipline. So after a couple of times of, of having to go get my bags, I, I hardly ever forget them, but I forgot them the other day. And I was, uh, and I forget what, what happens when you don't have a bag, right? When you don't need one. So it happened that I just bought like a pineapple, I don't know, a jar of uh, tomato sauce or something. I just had like four or five items that I can, I can pretty much manage carrying in these big old gorilla arms that I got. And uh, the lady says, would you like a bag? And she just pulls one out immediately. I says, no, no, thank you. One less bag at the landfill. One less bag to go on the earth. You know, I can just carry these things myself. And she just looked at me weird. And then she took the bag and she threw it in the trash. Now, I understand we have COVID and things like that, but it's not the first time I've ever seen that happen. And I just looked at the bag going in the trash and at the person, you know, not angrily, but just confused, like, what the heck just happened? I'm just, I'm trying to do my good part, but a lot of people don't get it. But I think that what I'm hoping is that those kind of things, if we all did this living by example, that people would catch on and maybe that woman who threw that bag in the trash thought about what I said, you know, after she looked at me funny and went, you know what, he's got a point there and maybe she'll start doing things. A friend of mine used to flick his cigarette butts out the window and as a surfer uh, in the ocean all the time, after a big rainstorm, the, one of the biggest things we have besides long grass all over your face every time you duck dive under waves, you know, you go, you submerge and come up, is cigarette butts. So there'd be long grass all over your head and cigarette butts and you can literally wipe them off, you know, in the, where the river meets the uh, ocean, which usually creates sandbars and there's good, good peaks, good waves. So I told my friend about what, what happens and it changed him forever. He told, he, he told other people and other people started not throwing their cigarette butts out the windows. And this chain reaction that could happen if we kindfully, mindfully express and live the change, be the change that we want to live, that we want to see in the world. I think it definitely has a ripple effect. Um, Sober October is another one I have on my notes here. Living by example, being the example you want to see. Uh, I, I like listening to a lot of podcasts from, uh, Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan and his buddies do this thing, the sober October. And I've got a couple friends of mine back from the day I'm from Russian descent. And a lot of my family, uh, a lot of my friends, they really, really like to party drinking a lot of alcohol, consuming a lot of alcohol. And, uh, it's become in our older age now where some of my friends are having difficulties. So, I did a thing when I spoke with them, you know, party or whatever the weekend, you know, say, hey, you're going to have a beer over the phone with me or something. I said, no, I'm not really drinking. And they asked, well, why? I said, well, I'm doing, I'm giving myself a break. I'm just going, I never mentioned that they should, or they have a problem. Maybe they might have a problem or something. I just says, I'm doing a thing called sober October, no alcohol. Uh, for me, it was no alcohol, no sugar. Uh, I think I spoke about it in my, one of my shows. If not, I definitely should. The, the alcohol, I guess, because I don't drink so much, it, it doesn't really bother me, but the sugar, the sugar was intense, but I piled it all on there just to give myself, my body a break from everything. And what I happened is I inspired a few people I know who says, you know what, I'm going to do this with you. And they were really happy. One of them said that they're completely done drinking alcohol. They just forgot how good they feel when they're not drinking. And it's just that kind of example. And maybe we saved a life. I don't know, but it's just little things that we can do. I, I, I really, really want to express here today. Um, so I spoke about cleaning up the uh, oceans, which I, I, I'll do this summer. Maybe I'll do some TikTok or some um, live streaming or something with you guys. I'll duct tape my, my camera to my face and take you guys out. And, uh, but no, I, uh, I go out myself and I actually pick up the trash in front of people. Uh, they throw their, their water bottles in the summertime. They just, the tourists and people over here in, in San Diego count North County where I live, they'll just trash the beaches. And what I'll do is I'll go up and pick stuff up and the people will look at me funny, like, what are you doing? You know? And then I'll ask them, I'll hold my bag out and say, do you, would you like me to haul your trash to the trash can for you? You know? And they'll, some of them just look at me funny, like, no, leave creep, you weirdo. And some people are like, yeah, okay. You know, one last thing. And then, um, I noticed I was picking one beautiful thing is I was picking up, uh, you know, little pieces of candy wrappers and stuff and th putting it in my bag. And one of the, the, this little girl, one of the, the family's daughters, she started picking up the stuff around her and then handed it to me. And I said, you see, do you see, we finally made, we planted a seed that that little girl, that little being is going to think and go, there was some weird, strange, ape looking, bald headed man walking around the ocean, you know, the beaches cleaning up trash. And I remember I handed him something. He said, thank you. And maybe that'll etch in their mind. Like, you know, one plus one equals, you know, we keep adding, do the, uh, the, uh, uh math here. 
the oceans start to die off with all the plastics and then they maybe that changed their lives so those little cool things that we can do it's really awesome too I, i've been seeing some tiktok videos and stuff where people will post it like if you need someone to see you cleaning up you know, I do this all the time. Anywhere I go, uh, my mini retirements, we go way out in the wilderness. Me and my kids will pick up trash. We'll actually haul it with us because there's no trash cans where we go. So nobody's ever seen it, but I, I could feel it. You know, as I said, the joy in my heart and my soul for doing such things. I'm trying to teach that to my kids. But I've seen a couple people showing it before and after, like these videos or pics of them cleaning up like a, an ocean cove or a forest area or the desert or something. All the trash bags, all, you know, what it looked like, just a pure mess. And then holding up, and I thought that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It seemed like a trend. And let's try to feed those trends. Let's go and like and, and subscribe and you know, to these people's channels and stuff and get it so that more people, instead of, you know, do these trends, instead of... Uh, scantily clad young girls you know being a trend on tiktok and stuff like that let's make a a, a a trend where people are actually cleaning stuff up um my last note i have here which i've noticed a lot and i've been practicing for 2020 well i guess i did it in 2021 too is to always talk like a human being first and meaning when i meet my clients i'm in sales i own my own construction business i'm an entrepreneur so it's it's uh it's very polite for me when i have clients to hey how's it going and everything don't just jump into the sales you know you got to kind of work your way in and but i'll take it as long as it needs to go most of the time but what happens when i'm talking to the bank person right if i'm talking to an employee um if i'm at the grocery store you know, a waitress or I don't hardly ever go out to eat, but for waitresses, but just people in general, if we start with, you know, hello, how's it going? My name is Adrian. You know, how are you doing today? Great, great. It's just, a, and I, I don't even just jump in. I'll say, I'm in, I don't know where you're at, you know, calling on the phone for the bank. I'm in California and it's, it's just gloomy out here and everything. I can't I miss the sunshine and all that, but I'm making the best of the day. How about you? Where are you at? You know, I've heard people tell me interesting stories. I'm in Wisconsin and it's like 50 below and I'm like, whoa are you kidding me 50 below what does that even feel like you know and we have a little laugh and that you can see the charm the humanness i guess is what i want to say and then they're like what can i help you with man you know and then they they'll go out of their way to help you to explain everything in detail and it's just the human thing as as i always say in the show human up we need to human up and i think a lot of us are forgetting that and a lot of us speak to each other like automatons you know, even though you will, you will express kindness to people, there's a lot of people that don't reciprocate. They're just, they're so locked in and they're just like, yeah, okay, what do you want? You know, I've had clients do it. I've had people I've, I mean, over the phone, as I said, I'm like, hi, how you doing? Like, how can I help you? Not even good. How are you? I'm just like, wow. You know, so we're, I think in order for us to live a resilient, sustainable life, we need to remember these types. This is simple little message and more to ourselves because the power that you feel for doing the things, being and living the change that you want to see. Stop talking about all the change you want to see and start being it. I think that's one of the biggest problems we have. That's with successfulness as far as making money, being famous if that's what you're after, living, you know, get that farm, get that homestead, plant those trees, grow your own food, raise your own animals, capture your own water filtration systems, your own water collection systems and I don't know, start community, start finding equal like-minded people. It all starts with us actually living it. Because if you can imagine, you guys come to me saying, oh, I think I can relate to this guy. This guy's pretty cool. But when you actually meet me, you're going to go to my spin farm location and see that I walk the walk. You're going to see that I, I grow a lot of my own food. I got all these weird little species of plants. I'm saving seeds. I'm all over the place. We go pick up trash. We can go travel for a month, two months, three months, go wherever the heck we want, right? All of these things, it's not normal. Uh, it's not a normal life, but it's a beautiful life. And that we, maybe someone would see that this is not just a bunch of talk. This is actually, there's a lot of things happening all over the place. You know, and it, there's something to actually show. So I guess the biggest thing I want to just need to spit out, I guess, is that Maybe we can focus a lot more on living that first, just like when an airplane is going down, right? They say, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. You know, if you start losing elevation, most people's uh, trend is to go and stick it. You know, their impulse is to stick the oxygen on their kid first to save their kid. What good are you? How could you save your kid if you're the one blacking out first? So put the oxygen mask on yourself and then help those around you. That way that you can stay focused. You know, it's a strange uh, thing in life, you know, a, a example, but I kind of think that's the way we're going. You know, there's a lot of trouble in the world. There's a great reset coming. There's inflation. There's all kinds of crazy stuff happening right now. 
But how are we truly sustainably, resiliently supposed to help somebody if we don't have our end covered, right? And if we want to change the world, a lot of people, the way I see it, and it's probably the reason why I'm doing a lot of the show is that they don't know where to start. They're following the herd. They're following the rat race. They're so entrenched in this that they think that this is all that is. So if they wanted to change and there's someone telling them, here's how we can do it, they probably want to see it, right? They, it's, and maybe that they, it would, their common logic and sense that we can, um, we can shape somebody, or not shape somebody, we can show them an example and get them excited, but we'd have them even that more locked in and excited if they came to the castle, to the forest rather, and saw all the abundance and the beauty that permaculture, natural farming, and living a resilient life has to offer. We don't have to work that much. You don't have to pay that much in taxes. You can retire early or maybe never re find something you love to do and never retire. What if we turned everything on its head and did everything backwards, did it differently? What if we started molding things to how we like it? One shoe doesn't fit all. Why have we compartmentalized everything? You've been stuck in a box. That's why you're angry. That's why you're depressed. That's why you have no energy. That's why you don't want to do anything. That's why you can't even see the rest of the world because you've been stuck in a box. But once we take them out of the box, they can't just fit in any, in any other section. They'll need to create their own boxes, their own surroundings, their own ecosystem to find out what fits their blood type, what fits their, their spiritual type, their happiness type. And from there, they can grow. So we need to, in short, Become more into ourselves and start to, to live. All right, guys, that's the show. I want to thank you guys, each and every one of you, for taking the time out and being here today. And if you guys can, give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down. If you did give me a thumbs down, please let me know why. I love to hear all your guys' opinions, but it really helps me out. That's all I'm asking is if you guys like and share, comment on the show. It helps the algorithms for this show to get known. That's what's going to keep the lights on around here. So, guys, there's an email down below in the description. If you guys want to make any comments, just say hello. Give any suggestions. And as I always say, guys, go out there and have yourself a near-life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. And human up, my friends.